Domestic violence is something which is not just between a husband and wife or a boyfriend and girlfriend. It's domestic inside the house, between people that live there. It could be your uncle, it could be your auntie, nephew, niece, brother, sister, mother's, mother, son, father, daughter. It could be anybody domestically under the same roof, whoever, and that's what it is. It is not only um, abuse that is heard between partners or between uh, married couples or between um, hitting the children. No, it's not. And a lot of communities that I've come across, the f when I ask them, do you know what domestic violence is? So they would say something like, oh yeah, it's not a domestic, if somebody hits you, it's okay, as long as you don't bleed, as long as you don't bruise, it is not domestic violence. I mean, that is a scary thought, if that is what they're thinking. the multicultural um, communities that are around work with service providers. There could be a victim, DV victim, it could be a phone call from um, WDV CAS, which is an organization that supports domestic violence victims and provides support, um, shelter, accommodation, everything for them. So it could be one of those or it could be someone who's just come down to the station and cannot talk to a police officer. She wants to talk to a multicultural liaison officer. I go and help her out and we do that. So it varies a lot. Um, so I work with um, youth, I work with families and children, I work with aged people, elder abuse is another one. So there is a lot of collaboratives that go on between the police and other stakeholders. That could be the council, that could be the NGOs. Um, on the 30th of this month, um, in collaboration with Burwood Council, and Metro Assist, we are opening up a domestic violence hub. It's basically a walk-in, it's a one-stop shop where you have various service providers like um, Services Australia, you've got um, housing, you've got um, legal aid there, you've got WDV CAS, which is the domestic violence support service. So you have all these organizations which are gonna be, be there and a domestic violence person can walk in for information or for help, for legal help, and there'll be a domestic violence officer as well there to provide them with information. So the court process and stuff like that is pretty daunting. But if she comes and speaks to a police officer, even the uniform thing is a big thing for a lot of the victims that come from multicultural communities. So we're trying to desensitize it so that they are able to attend court, they are able to speak to a police officer, you know, a normal person, even when I'm driving a car, even today, if I see a police vehicle next to me or behind me, I look at my speedometer. Am I, am I going fast or whatever? So it happens to all of us. The uniform is pretty daunting. And when you're coming from a country, a different country from overseas, it's quite normal. And then when you are in a DV situation, when it becomes a criminal matter, whether you're a victim or the perpetrator, it's even more daunting to come to a police station. So hence, the hub is a place where it's not in a police station. So it's in a central place where it is void of all police or all eyes from the perpetrators. Nobody knows where this hub is. So we open up this hub on the 30th. It'll be open. I think we're going to make it a fortnightly thing where a victim can come in and get the advice and support that they need. We don't want to advertise it publicly because we are not attracting, trying to attract the person of interest here. We want the victims to seek advice. A lot of the victims, they're in denial. You know, they think that um, if a husband is asking a lot from her, which could mean like, um, different methods of coercive control. It could be the financial stuff, it could be the physical stuff, it could be even the food. There's too much salt in here, you know. You don't know how to cook. Don't I give you enough enough um, money to go and buy good food, etc. They just need a reason. And abuse is done and she thinks that it is okay. He's my husband and he can do that to me. 
the worst part of all this, I guess goosebumps when I'm talking to you, it's the children who are seeing this on a daily basis and normalizing it. Now, these children, they are children, they are going to grow up and they are imbibing all that. They are putting it down somewhere deep down inside there. Outwardly, you ask mom, are the kids okay? Yes, they are fine. You know, they're playing, they're doing the normal stuff. Yes, they are doing the normal stuff. What's happening inside? You don't know because you can't see that. Whatever you see externally, that's why a lot of the members, they think that domestic violence is bleeding, it's hurting, you know, any marks and stuff. That is domestic. No, it's not. Domestic violence is more than the marks, than the scars, than the bruises that one has on oneself. Holistically, if you're looking at it, it's the, I'm more worried about the children that are seeing these things because these are a future generation. If they're seeing these, they will come a stage when they're going to repeat that, they're going to mirror what mom and dad went through. If it's a boy, they, it is said that the boy is going to mirror the dads. The boy probably think, oh, this is what dad does to mom. I'm never going to do it to my partner or to my wife. But when the time comes for him, he repeats that because that's what he saw dad do. And we do not want that to happen to a future generation. We need to stop it where it starts. There is this um, Bollywood movie. Um, Alia Bhatt was in this movie. I forget what it was called. And she is basically, um, her mom was abused in her relationship with Alia's father. And Alia goes through the same thing. And she thinks, like most DV victims think, she thinks that, oh, you know, if only I do this better, he won't be, you know, um, hurling all this abuse at me. It was physical abuse the whole time. And in the morning, he gets up and he says, oh, I did that to you because I love you. I care about you. That's why I did it. Come nighttime, the same thing happens. Now, this keeps happening. And the person next door, because they live in Chopris or whatever, even in units in Sydney, if you look at it, um, the next door neighbor hears it because it gets quite loud. But they don't do anything because why? The man is allowed to hit the wife, abuse the wife, if she doesn't cook and clean for him, if, um, if she hurls abuse, doesn't listen to her in-laws, that is one reason the husband can hit her. And if when he wants sex, if she doesn't give him sex, the husband can hit her. So although the next door neighbor is hearing all this, she's a bystander, a silent bystander, not acting on it because he or she thinks that, yes, she's not nibhawing her role in what she's doing. You know, she's either not giving sex on tap, not giving, cooking good food, um, and, and speaking ill of the in-laws. So it is allowed. They come here and... Over here, it could be the they thing that, okay, it's their affair. Whatever's happening behind closed doors, I don't think I should interfere in it. Um, when I do my presentations, the one thing I tell them is, the, you are a bystander. You are the only person who's, who's seen this, right? Today, you have seen her alive and standing. Tomorrow, she may not be there. Now, can you live with yourself? You would be the only person probably who could have saved her life and you didn't because you were scared, you were shy, there could be so many reasons or you, you were traumatized as well seeing this happen and there are children involved too. All you can do is just ring up triple zero. You don't have to say who you are, you just say ring up triple zero and give them the address and they are not going to say hey you know you are the one you know the neighbor she's the one who dropped you in they are not going to say that if you have to be a good citizen of australia this is a beautiful country you have to be a responsible citizen and call it out if you don't help that lady that day there may not be a second day for the lady she may not be there yes there is um as I said, the DV hub that I was talking about, that is basically a one-shop idea. There'll be counsellors as well. So basically, if you need counselling, we do, in this hub, we don't ask, we don't look after the welfare of, police do not look after the welfare of a person of interest, a perpetrator, whatever you want to call it. We are there for the victims only, right? So there are counsellors, but there is, there are counsellors that victim services give you, and this is like couple counselling. 
and services are there but honestly there are very few that take it and when I'm talking to you right now I'm thinking of the Indian diaspora okay um, the man can do no wrong again I'm, I'm generalizing here because I'm talking about the worst of the worst okay now some of them have gone to counsel and I know counselors as well because they ring me up for advice on certain legal things on the court process or on the police side of things so I know that and there are, I'm hoping that the men that are growing up now, they will take up these facilities that are there. Besides the counseling part, um, if the woman, obviously, if she leaves her husband's house with the children, I mean, she doesn't have a roof over her head, no way. There are emergency housings available, and there are organizations, as I mentioned before, the WDV CAS, WayJack, there is Cable. There are lots of organizations that are there to help them out. WDV CAS is, is based in every, where there is a courthouse, you'll have WDV CAS. And WDV CAS supports the victim from day dot. They will do the referrals for them, the warm and the cold referrals as well, and provide them with the services they, that they need right then and there. Um, some of the emergency houses may be for three months, but what happens after three months, they are part of it and they make sure that they are supported. It is a very, very difficult transition for a victim, but they make sure that something is done for them. So that's where collectively if service providers, they work in every region, they work collectively so that they can provide uh, support to this DV victim. In addition, there is something called a SAM meeting, um, a safety action meeting. So this has been, um, this was started about maybe about eight, nine years ago, and this is a police initiative. And in that meeting, that's, I think it's a fortnightly one. And you have, say for example, there's a WDV CAS is involved in it. They have a list of victims for that fortnight, right? And all the critical ones go up in the SAM meeting. We call it the SAM meeting. It goes up in the SAM meeting and you have service providers there, starting from housing, to immigration, to blah, blah, Centrelink, everyone is there so that the support is given to the victim and the children that she's, where she's from, so that the s s services are present there and these are managers and stuff, so they make decisions on the spot most of the time so that services are made available for the victim then and there. Some of them, I mean, the names are hidden incognito and they are sent elsewhere so that, the vic so that the perpetrator is not aware of where she's located because of security reasons. So these are the services that are, that are available and there are so many more. All, if there is a victim around, I would suggest that you ring up WDV CAS or ring up the police station or, or McClough's that are there in police stations and they will be able to refer you or guide you to the right place. Because if you get stuck there, you are never going to come out. Your children are never going to be good citizens like you expect them to be. Coming to a new country, we have big hopes, but the hopes will be all shattered if you don't seek help. Everything is so accessible these days. Um, with the online thing, I, I would uh, the first thing that comes to mind is um, before you give a phone to, to your child, make sure, delay the process and make sure that your child is mature enough to handle this, all right? So the stranger, stranger danger thing as well is there are so many things that happens online. And I was reading a survey which was done by the eSafety Commission 2022, and they were saying that out of, these are the uh, children aged between 8 years to 17 years. Out of 10 children, 6 children have been accosted before they have even met the person online. Some of them, I think um, 4 out of 10 have already communicated with the perpetrator before online communication has started. So it's a weird world that we live in and it is so important for parents to set the boundaries. Laptop even, you know, you give them the laptop, make sure it is in a visible area and let them know you, you need to learn yourself and then teach your children as well about safety, the stranger danger part. Just because it's online, it's not safe. And 
if somebody sends them um, nude pictures and stuff, they need to tell ma let mom and dad know. There has to be a pin code which is shared only between the parents and them. They're not allowed to tell tell their friends either. At night, when before going to bed, make sure that everybody puts their phone on charge in mom and dad's bedroom, for example. You know, so that you don't have access to those online stuff at that time. Um, now, police officers, we have got youth officers, and they even go to um, childcare centers and talk to them about stranger danger, you know? And so they know who is the safe person and who is not the safe person. The van stops and the man shows lollies to the thing, a lollipop. Of course, the child is gonna go, a puppy, you know? The child is gonna run to the puppy. So how do you then teach, teach your child not to go to a stranger? It, we have, as parents, we have to learn so much these days to be able to educate our children. All right, so for domestic violence, help is available and please stop at start. Thank you. That was easy.